For this lesson, I'm working in Project Oto01, working with the project panel. You can access that project file with the media that comes with this lesson. Just double click on it to open it up in Premiere Pro. The project panel is where you'll import, locate, find, organize, and preview your clips. Let's get a little more familiar with this important part of the Adobe Premiere Pro interface. At the bottom left corner of the project panel, we have this list view and icon view. If I switch to the icon view, I'm getting a thumbnail representing the contents of this master sequence. We can see that over here in the timeline panel as well. Back in the list view, I'm going to expand this bin called media. I'm just going to click on the disclosure triangle there. And now you can see we've got quite a few clips already imported into this project. At the bottom of the project panel, there's a navigator. And if I click and drag along, you can see quite a bit of information about these clips. Here, for example, the video info heading is giving me the image resolution of these clips. If you click on a heading, Premiere Pro will sort the items in the project panel based on that heading. Here I'm clicking on the name heading and it's reversing the sort order. See the direction of this little simplified arrow. I'll click again and now we're back into regular alphabetical order. I'm going to double click on this media bin to open it in its own floating panel. And remember, bins in Premiere Pro have the same controls as the project panel. So I can switch this to the icon view as well. At the bottom left, I have the option to change the size of these thumbnails. I can make them really pretty big. And I'm going to resize this panel. So you can see that each of these can become a kind of a source window for you to check out your contents. If I hover the mouse over a thumbnail, I get a preview where the left edge is the beginning of the clip and the right edge is the end. It's a very quick way to see the contents of your clips. This feature in Premiere Pro is called Hover Scrub. If I single click to select a clip rather than double clicking, which would open it in the source monitor, I get a mini timeline, a little indicator of where I am in the clip. I can click this mini playhead and drag it to different positions. And I can use the spacebar to play back and stop. I should note that these clips have been renamed to make them a bit easier to find. And that's also useful for searching. At the top of the bin, there's a search field. And you can type anything you like in here to find clips that match the text you type. So if I type in the word kids, you can see all the other clips are hidden and only this clip with the word kids in the name remains. I'm going to click the X here to clear that search field so we can see the rest of the clips. If I close the bin as well and hide the contents of this bin by clicking the disclosure triangle right next to the name here in the project panel, you'll see that the same feature works. In fact, it'll reveal clips that would otherwise be hidden. If I type in the word kids, well, I don't even need to make it to the end of the word. You can see that the clip has been displayed. And in fact, the sequence has been hidden. Any item at all in the project panel that does not match the search will be hidden. I'll just clear that search field again. So that's an introduction to the project panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. For this lesson, I'm using the O202 Source and Program Monitors project. And you can find that with the media that comes with this lesson. Just double click on the project file to open it. Most of the time you'll invest in video editing will be spent watching clips and making creative choices about them. You'll use the Source Monitor up here to preview clips and the Program Monitor over here on the right to preview the sequences you add them to. So let's learn a little bit more about the source and program monitors. You can double click on any clip in the project panel to open it in the source monitor. You can play and stop using this button at the bottom, or you can use the space bar. At the bottom left-hand corner, you can see we've got this series of eight digits. And in fact, we've got something very similar over on the right. And this is called time code. It's measuring where we are in the clip in terms of hours, that's the first number, minutes, seconds, and individual frames. I can tell by looking at the bottom right hand corner here, the duration of the clip. It's zero hours, zero minutes, 13 seconds, and 14 frames long. But the bottom left hand corner is telling me where I am relative to all of the media that the camera recorded originally. It's pretty common for professional camera operators to begin at different hours. We weren't six hours and 42 minutes into this shot. The camera probably began recording at six hours just to make it easier to identify one batch of media from another. 
as we move through the clip, you can see these numbers change. If I click and drag at the bottom of the clip, I can move to view different parts of it. This can be a quick way of familiarizing yourself with your media. And in fact, clicking and dragging in this way is called scrubbing. If you want to move through the clip more precisely, you can use these one frame forward and one frame backwards buttons. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Here's the right arrow and the left arrow. It's quite possible you won't want to use all of a clip. Sometimes you'll have a very long recording where you only want five or 10 seconds. And you can tell Premiere Pro which part of the clip you want using special marks. These are called in or out marks. The in mark is the beginning of the part you want. And we can add that mark by clicking the mark in button right here. And I'll move my playhead a bit later in the clip and click the mark out button to specify the end of the part that I want. If I use this clip anywhere in a sequence, I'll only get this piece that's highlighted between the marks. I can update the marks anytime I like. So if I click earlier on in the clip here in this mini timeline, I can click the mark in button again and you can see the clip updates. You'll notice as well, now I've chosen a part of the clip, this duration indicator at the bottom right corner has gotten shorter. Now we've just chosen six seconds and 23 frames. These marks are persistent. You can close the project and they'll still be applied when you next view the clip. If you want to remove the marks, you can right click in the picture and choose clear in and out. The program monitor has the same controls as the source monitor. You can play, stop and so on. One major difference, of course, is that it's showing the contents of the sequence that we've created down at the bottom. If I scrub through the program monitor, it'll scrub the playhead in the sequence as well. There are in and out marks here too. But when you add them, they're actually added to the sequence. And that's for a more advanced workflow that we don't need for now. So I can right click in the program monitor and choose clear in and out. Or for that matter, I can right click in the sequence right at the top where the numbers are and choose clear in to out as well. In a way, you could say that this timeline at the bottom of the program monitor is a mini version of the full timeline below it. That's an introduction to the source and program monitors in Adobe Premiere Pro. For this lesson, I'm using the 0203 Explore the Timeline panel project file. You can find this with the media files that accompany this lesson. The timeline panel is where you'll build your sequences, arrange clips, make simple audio adjustments, and change the timing of edits. I've got a basic sequence here that has a long music clip. There it is. I single clicked to select it, and a number of video clips. Here we are. I'm single clicking to select each of these and highlight them. When I play, as the playhead arrives at a new clip, we'll see the contents of that clip in the program monitor. So constructing a sequence is largely placing clips one after another from left to right inside the timeline panel. You'll notice that we've got video tracks and audio tracks, and there's a line dividing them that you can click on and drag to change which part of the sequence you're looking at. As your sequences become more complex, this dividing line might become more useful. Note that I'm clicking here to the left of the line dividing the track headers from the tracks themselves, not in between the tracks in the main part of the timeline panel. There's a very useful keyboard shortcut that you can use to make any panel in Premiere Pro full screen. And it's the Accent Grav key. I'm just pressing it right now. Whichever panel your mouse cursor is over will go full screen. And you can press the button again to go back to the regular size. Now my cursor is over the project panel, full screen, and back again. The location of that key does vary. So you may have to search for it on your keyboard. Each video track in the timeline panel has a track output option. Here, I'm just clicking the eyeball to turn off track output for video one. And now I'll still get the music if I play, but none of the pictures. I'll just click that button to turn the track back on. You also have a mute option for audio tracks. If I click this M for mute track and play, I'm pressing the space bar now. 
no audio. I'll turn that back off. And the music returns. You'll notice that you can click and drag to move clips around on the timeline. In fact, it's a single operation. You don't need to click and release and then click and drag. I can just drag in a single step. And you'll notice if I drag over to the left, this clip segment, as it's called, snaps into position. You feel it more than you see it, but you, you can just about see that clip jumps into position at the end of the previous clip. It lines up perfectly. This feature is called snapping, and you can turn it off and on at the top left of the timeline panel by clicking this button here, snap. I can also select a number of clips by lassoing. I'm going to click and drag here to make a marquee selection. And now that I've got four clips selected, I can move them all together. Selection is important in Premiere Pro. And of course, you can tell which clips are selected because they're highlighted. Notice also that we have the option to resize these track headers quite a lot. Again, I'm clicking to the left of the line here where all of the controls are. I can make these waveforms really quite tall. And you'll notice that some of the controls in the track header are just not visible until you make the track header taller. If you have a mouse wheel, you can use that to change the height as well. There's a navigator at the bottom of the timeline panel, which is also a zoom control. You can click on these handles to zoom in and out. And you'll notice at the top left of the timeline panel, we have a time code indicator. This is where we are in our sequence based on hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So that's an overview of the main features of the timeline panel in Adobe Premiere Pro.